Selective breeding. Yes, humanity has done this to a lot of things. Not just animals, but also plants, produce, you know, like various things. Mm -hmm. uh, but dogs, I would say, are the most uh, evident because you look at what dogs started as versus what we have now with all the different breeds and everything like that. Mm -hmm. Cats, same way. It irks me that <coughs> some of the things they've done with certain breeds in terms of selective breeding because it just seems cruel to me at a point. Like, yes. That they continued to go with that. Well, like, especially like pugs. Like bulldogs. How, how bad are like nasal and breathing problems they have? Yeah, and they have to have faces. their nostrils uh, clipped <clears throat> when mm -hmm. they're puppies. Which and is... then uh, munchkin cats, like, I know they're fucking adorable, but, like, they have bad, like, spinal problems. Yes. So yeah. because of the bambinos. Yeah. I hate of, that. Like, I really hate that Short shit. legs not being, you know, supporting their bodies properly, essentially. Oh, yeah. It's... They're, like, the cutest little guys I've ever seen, but, like... Oh, yeah. They're sad. precious. They're basically all going to have pain when they're older because of how oh. they were bred, you know? Yeah, that's true. Jesus. Even our Sphinx cats, they have, where they're um, purebred, they're, um, they have compromised immune systems, so they get sick more often than, like, a regular house cat would, or, you know. Yeah. So they have to be aware of and, what's going on. And you also have to be aware of inbreeding, because that's what can lead to a lot of health issues. That's actually uh, the the problem that my cat or like Lulu and what she had. Uh, turns out that uh, her like like there was inbreeding amongst her, like the litter that she came from, and out of the lit entire litter, all of them suffered kidney uh, kidney issues, and uh, Lulu was the luck one of the lucky ones that actually made it and lived a fairly long life. It sucks that that happened, but at the same time, it's like, what can be done about it? Like, it's... We're so far down the rabbit hole of selective breeding that there's literally no, like, nothing that we that can be done. Also, apologies if you guys hear my tongue rolling, because apparently you just decided to start yelling at me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I hear that. that. <laughs> I hear you. But... We got Casual Geographic here with how humanity gave this animal the middle finger. I guess let's see which one he's talking about. Based upon what I'm seeing here, this pigeon, this pigeon needs... That pigeon don't look real. It looks photoshopped. It yeah. does. <laughs> it's like two stuck together or something. Oh my god, what is that? What the... Oh my god! I is that what is that? They start moving. Yeah. What in the hell... Huh? What is it? Though? I don't know. I mean, Cat he's obviously puffing his chest out for something. It's a pigeon and but some kind of exotic parrot? bird. Maybe. Yeah, the, the uh, uh, legs uh, look like what owl legs look like underneath their poofy feathers. Yeah. Um, I don't know what this is. I'm terrified. Maybe he'll tell us. Oh, oh, no, 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 Oh my gosh. They just committed homicide on that pig pigicide. Definitely know who this is and why he was an icon. Hey, Steve. Did you know there were at least two creatures that khaki animal Jesus was afraid of? One, hippos. Yes. No further explanation needed. No. Also, parrots. Yeah. The same Steve Irwin that cuddled crocodiles, got a hickey from a python on live TV and apologized to the python and did this was the same man that experienced legitimate fear in the face of an overgrown parakeet. And the crazy uh, part yeah, is, they can that has your nothing to do with off. this. Yes, literally. Their beaks are, their bite force is strong enough to clip your finger completely off. You'll basically just be like, hey everybody, I'm number one. You should insert the picture of you oh. and Marlin, or Merlin. Oh. <laughs> Gosh. The, uh, yeah, his the mom has... Um, Indian ring neck and um, 
we take him to this Avion rescue place to get his nails and things uh, oh, she got trimmed. A new, new bird I didn't know about. No, no. Huh? No, she's got a little bird. His name's Blueberry. Yeah, yeah he knows about Blueberry. Yeah. yeah. But I, I took stuff? Blueberry. Oh, that's what Blueberry is? An Indian ring name. Yeah. Oh, I yeah. didn't realize that. Okay. Um, anyway, I, we took Blueberry to the Avion Rescue Place, and the lady that does Blueberry's nails, she has a bird, and his name is Merlin. Try to find that on here. Merlin. That, a, so that's why my brain was registering. Like, I thought you were talking that, about she had a bird named Merlin now. Mm-mm. Okay. Oh, no, 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 no. Gotcha, no. gotcha. Merlin and, uh, what's the other one's name? I don't anyway, know. she has two birds that she takes to nursing homes, and they talk to, you know, he can talk, and so can the other one, but I can't remember her name. I can't remember when we went there. Do you remember what day that was when we went there? It's not on your phone, it's on my phone. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, you'll have to send me. I, I was looking for her, I was like, did I take photos of that? You're going to have to send me those. Yeah. This video, I really only brought that up to make my biggest fear sound less ridiculous. Because out of all the animals in the world, I've historically only been afraid of one. I've held eight foot pythons when I was six. I've had no problems with the spiders in my house. I've always had a soft spot for sharks. Yet the one animal that could stop me dead in my tree. Matter of fact, just guess. Names of mine too and then guess. Okay, what, okay. What animal do y'all think uh, Casual's afraid of? Mmm. Mm. Cassowaries? A bear. Mmm. Cassowaries, bears. It's a, it's a castle bear. Basically a giant a asshole bird that's the size of an emu that is much more aggressive. Mm -hmm. It's a murder emu. Yes. Mm. <clears throat> And don't get me wrong, I emus think bite. Some emus like bite the shit out of somebody. Oh yeah, by no means are emus are dicks too. Cassowaries are just the most like they're the spawns of Satan. Out of all three, hmm. yeah, they're the spawns of Satan. So you say cassowaries, you say bears. I really don't have a good guess other than that. I was just trying to think of something people might be afraid of. He was just mentioning parrots, like he had a bird that looked weird at the beginning of the video. So, like, maybe cassowaries? I don't know. I don't know how humanity gave them the middle finger, though. Maybe the... I don't know. I thought I don't he was just talking about legitimate fears. No, he's talking about the one that he's afraid of. Yeah. He said out of all the animals in the world, there's one that he fears. Well, let's see what it is. I was about to say, here's an ad while you grapple with that. Pigeons. <laughs> it's always been pigeons. Pigeons? I could never he's fully explain it, but... He's afraid of pigeons? I I've held a pigeon. <laughs> I have too. As early as I can remember, these bum doves put the fear of Dante's Inferno in every fiber of my vessel. There's two stories that sum up my feelings towards pigeons. As a kid, I could vaguely remember crossing the street with my dad when one of the spawns of Avian Antichrist popped out from under the car like a Five Nights at Freddy's jump scare. And from the way my dad likes to tell the story, apparently I recoiled so bad that I jumped back and nearly got turned into a speed bump by a passing van. There is an alternate universe where my irrational fear of pigeons cost my folks a dependence and had me have then sent. So this is really more exposure therapy than an actual video, and the it's first step Becky. is understanding. There are a Isn't lot more Becky types the of one pigeons from than my Finding Dory. Becky? I, I think so. Yeah. I think so. Conscious could ever curse that me with. So There's over 350 pallets of pigeons populating the planet. You got the Victoria crowned pigeon, the biggest bird on the roster whose headdress got it named after royalty. Then well, there's the Nika bar, the closest thing Ooh. to a present day dodo, and definitely the high beast flexor of the family. Can't forget the Karuru, the New Zealand variant, famous for being a crippling alcoholic. <laughs> so hammered off fermented fruit that they legit forget how to fly. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> I can just hear that, like, mate, I went a little too high last night on all these fermented flowers, bro. I'm fucked up over here. <laughs> Wait. Oh, you ain't my mate, you're a statue. Fuck. It's not Australia, is it? I New Zealand. Oh, New Zealand. Okay. Sorry. I, the New Zealand accent and the, and the Australian accent, I, they overlap for me. I know the Kiwis and the Aussies are just like, bro, you're not getting it right. Fucking do it right, mate. It's like, I could just be doing it like the Boganese accent, which if you ever, like, 
You want to talk about like Australian redneck? Like you, you know how rednecks talk right here? Like man, they go what about go past that one this week? You know what I'm saying, man? Down there, it's the same thing, except it's like it's like. Man, let me tell you something right now, man. You mind if I ain't going to Yeah, you got right in your face, man. What are you talking about? It's like, that's Boganese. Okay. I spoke to some Bogans, and Jesus Christ. And you've probably heard the phrase turtle dove, especially this time of year. Well, today I found out that I apparently had no clue what they look like or that they originated from the Middle East. A hop, skip, and an eight-hour flight to the Philippines, and you'll find a Luzon bleeding heart pigeon named for obvious reasons. You got the silvery wood, the maroon pigeon, and the purple winged dove, all of which are in danger of being discontinued. And then you got the pigeons humans bred like dogs, which would easily make this the pug of poultry. It's like a pigeon police sketch done by a kindergartner on Adderall with no prior knowledge of anything bird. Oh my There's gosh. hundreds of breeds of pigeons and the English powder might just be the nastiest work of all. Although oh. the English carrier might just be oh. a close second because honestly, what in the f- what, what, what even is this? What was the goal if this was the outcome? All those pigeon remixes go back to the OG. The I've held one like that. Game. Yeah, that's the OG and the most prominent. Hey, the main mugshot that comes up when you Google pigeon. And this is where I stopped hating and started learning. For example, the rock dove was originally only found here. Well, well actually here in the dark red. That's right, any place outside this red is a place people uber the scourge of my soul. That includes what might as well be the pigeon capital of the world, New York City. <laughs> yeah. So of course I just had to grow up 15 minutes from it because RNG. Apparently, pigeons first touched American soil in the early 1600s via Europeans. That means the Flying City Merchant is more natural to the Sahara Desert than to the streets of Manhattan. Which brings me to half the reason I'm making this video. What's the one thing you spend way too much time thinking about? I think all the time about how we domesticated pigeons and then we decided we don't want to use them anymore for like messages. So they are completely reliant on humans. They Have you ever seen like a nest of a pigeon? No, and I didn't know we domesticated them either. Yeah, their like nests are like three twigs and like the egg is just on the cold ground. So Because they don't know how to build a nest because we messed them up? Yeah. I did not What's know that? how to take this revelation and after looking into it, She's half right. Half, Pigeon nest yeah. is a meme as old as time. This is really something only an animal with no access to birth control could come up with. It's heavy on the f them kids, but before they're even born. At this point, it's like they're trying so hard not to try that it would literally take less effort to try. The thing is, they weren't named Rock Dove for nothing. In the wild, they'd normally raise their aesthetically challenged children on cliff ledges or crevices, which ended up being not that far off from where they shack up now. And as long as the ground's flat and the egg doesn't roll away to become a late termination and an early onset omelet, this is really all they need. Minimalism for the omelet. win. Yeah. <laughs> Honestly, that's true. Like, we domesticated them to, like, lay in, like, more flat, low areas. But they always laid them in dangerous positions because of where they originated. But the other point she made about us pretty much abandoning them... Turns out it's pretty accurate. Yeah, that which is actually true. Which brings me to my second story. So I had spent the day walking around New York with my mom and was understandably starving. So hungry that we decided to get food from a street side meat vendor. The cardinal sin of the city, but we didn't know any better. The food was immediately off, but let's be honest, not enough for me to stop. I remember the meat tasting gamey and fatty and had this really strong aftertaste that I'd never experienced before. It wasn't until I was two thirds done that I noticed a small cage halfway tucked under the stand. A small cage with maybe a dozen pigeons oh storming around. Oh my god, are you that? serious? Dude. Yeah, that's... Instantly, I'm looking at the vendor and I'm just like... And then I'm grabbing the cage and I'm like, You're free! Go! Fly away! Like I'd be breast. throwing up. Mm. Yeah. I'd be like, dude, like, you, ne you never heard pigeons called trash birds before? Yes. Sky rats? Like, it's like, you may as well be serving New York sewer rat on a stick, man. Like, exactly. That's why I'd be throwing up. At this moment, mm. I realized I was sold a chicken leg lie. Your boy just ate some pigeon wings. Mm. Now, that story is almost completely made up. But peep out just oh. the idea of getting cowards. <laughs> My God, dude. He Don't scare me, me like that. He, he had us. He had us in the first half. I'm not going to lie. Chicken probably disgusted most of y'all. 
The thing is, pigeons are regularly eaten by people in a lot of places. Squab is a name for an immature prepubescent domestic pigeon, and it's considered a delicacy depending on where you're standing. Oh, that's Which right. shouldn't even really be a surprise because one thing about pigeons, they get violated by the entire food chain. Yes. I've seen with my eyes pigeons get absolutely bodied by a street savvy Stuart Little. They somehow manage to find ways <laughs> to take L's from turtles. Yep. In fact, there's a catfish that specializes in murky an animal that literally got gift wrapped the ability to fly. And to add insult to injury, the fish is virtually blind. How do you fumble that bad? Pretty much the entire cast of Over the Hedge plays population control for pigeons. And we've all seen how pelicans conduct themselves in pigeon presence. And humans were no different. Yeah. Food was one of the- It's just peeping out. He's just- This pelican's just like, just like, I'm gonna eat you. And this pigeon's just like, dear God, help me! The pigeon looks more like he's like, whoa, he's kind of cozy in here. Oh, you see, my new pool. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> he just Dead. gets sucked down the gullet. <laughs> Consensus. Another reason was to employ them as messengers before iPhone became a thing. But another reason <laughs> was for pets. There was a time where owning a pack of pigeons wasn't just normal, it was a sign of status. If you had pigeons on your property, it meant Mike Tyson owned pigeons. Matter of fact, hmm. uh, like he would like back when he lived in uh, LA, you would often see him outside like flipping pigeons. Yeah, you know, he'd be like outside of their little coop. He'd be like and they would just like flutter and fly up and like get out of the coop. They would just like be resting on top of their coop. Yeah. Mm. You were probably doing also flipping pigeons was a way to let the people know that the cops were coming without like yelling out five zero or some shit like that. So then they were just like, and then like another building would see it. Same thing. Well, in life. Akbar the Great of the Mughal Empire had not one, but 2,000 pigeons as, as, as well. That is a comma. Make that 20,000 pet pigeons. Holy but in the time shit. Pigeons, 40 <laughs> pigeons went from a flex to something that guarantees <clears throat> 30 looks on the subway. And that's thanks to one of the most egregious gaslight campaigns you've ever seen. In June 1966, New York Parks Commissioner Thomas Hoving verbally eviscerated pigeons, blaming them for spreading filth and disease, and used a term you've definitely heard of, rats with wings. And just yep. like that, the pigeon's reputation went straight to hell. No return trip. <laughs> In the same article, Mr. Hoving also blamed the homeless and homosexuals for bringing property value down. Yep. Yeah, needless to say, the same level of like the bullshit they pull with McCarthyism and don't get me wrong, I have my, like, I have my, like, slights against communism, but, you know, pointing at everybody that you don't like and yelling communist, I'm sorry, that's a one-way ticket to just be like, no one's gonna take you seriously. He also became the commissioner January 16th, 1966, and resigned March 15th of the next year. His actual term was just over a year, but the slander he tagged the Metro Tweety with was permanent. Then Woody Allen dogpiled on them, and humanity has hated pigeons ever since. Pop culture. It's pop culture. Like how Mark Twain roasted coyotes so flagrantly, not only did it single-handedly earn them smoke from the public, it was directly responsible for the luckless Looney Tune. That's not a throwaway joke either. Look up what Wiley Coyote was based on. It's actually wild. But thanks to these three words, the bird that was more common in royalty than marrying your cousin, got typecast as a flying version of the animal whose hygiene allegedly turned half the population into a hashtag. I gotta say allegedly because new evidence suggests that rats weren't even responsible for the plague to begin with. Why the f*** you lying? It was Pigeons a fleas. got lied on too because they're nowhere near the disease risk we label them as, and I legitimately didn't know that before researching. They can carry disease, but because of their immune system, it's actually rare for them to transmit them to people. I know, I couldn't believe it either. It also turns out the glorified gutter Tweety is actually resistant to bird flu. Now they still can catch you slipping and usually the problems come from their lesser half. When uh -huh. pigeons drop deuces in one spot, it can dry up and eventually- <laughs> oh they, they turn that thing into a modern art masterpiece. <laughs> like, dude, Jackson Pollock would be proud. I've just been turn talking about Home Alone 2 for this entire video. Oh yeah, the um, pigeon lady. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Basically, she throws so the bird try seat on the people, and it's like people don't seem to want to talk to me. And it's like, well, may maybe try getting you know an outfit without pigeon poop on it first. Yeah. <laughs> she just laughs. Uh, Brenda Fricker. That was that was that woman's name. The uh, the actress. Yeah. From what everyone says, she is such a sweet person in real life. Well, she was a sweet person in the movie too. Yeah, well, yeah. She was. Just like the grandpa from the first movie that he was scared of. She just played the same role basically. Yeah. yeah. 
You want to know who else got a bad rap because of because of like how she was portrayed? Uh, the lady who played the Trunchbull in Matilda. Uh, she um... is a sweetheart in real life. Hmm. She just she's just really good at playing a playing a bad person. Yeah. Everybody hates the lady that played Cersei. Oh yeah, Lena Headey. Lena Headey is a is just just a, such a precious she's person. She's a really great actress too. She like, is. I mean, it's like I I think that's so messed up. I'm like, why why can't you people separate the art from reality? Like, right? Because people, she's not like that. Mm-hmm. Well, same thing with Jack Gleason. You know, Joffrey. Mm-hmm. Good lord, the oh death threats against him. Be like, I hate you for what you did. And I hate like, the character. I don't hate the actor. No, and, and Jack, Jack, that's, like that's the difference. Is like you, you can hate the the character in the show, and, but and and his, you know, his actions. actions and then I yeah, found out whatever. that um, Aubrey Plaza is basically April. Like she's basically playing herself when she plays April. So yes. <laughs> I was just like, all right, I really like. Well, Aubrey yeah, Plaza you get what you, you you get what you get <laughs> yeah, with her. So. And that's and that's that's awesome. I Who love that. that? Hmm? Aubrey Who Plaza. Who are you talking about? You never seen Parks and Rec? No. Oh. Well, April uh, Ludgate's the, a character she plays. What's in one that? of her other famous parts? Kate might have seen. I'm trying to think. You seen Scott Pilgrim versus the World? Nope. Ah. Damn. Um. She's a little more niche than. Uh, oh. Shoot! What's that movie called? <laughs> She did a comedy film like the a lot of people went and saw in theaters um, about five years ago or so. I can't remember. I can't remember the name of it now. It's not important. It's but okay. She's basically my biggest celebrity crush. Oh, okay. But like, if you want to see her real quick, I mean, it was... <laughs> oh gosh, I remember when uh, when we were discussing uh, this with Nikki, and Nikki said that she like she thought Aubrey Plaza was. Be- and she is. Oh, She's very okay. beautiful. Yeah. I know who that is. Yeah. She and Jenna... What's the... Yeah, uh, Jenna Ortega. Jenna uh, Ortega. They did the yeah. uh, awards ceremony yeah. for... Uh, was it the Grammys or Oscars or something? It was the something. Th- I think it was like the Emmys, I think. Yeah, whichever and, one does TV shows. Like and they that. and they yeah. both were sitting next to each other, and then it's just like it's like I don't understand why people we, say we're alike. It's like we're not alike at all. Obviously not. And it's just <laughs> that was the whole joke. Yeah. Thing. Wow, I see what they mean. They were, and they were like, "Wait, they have a point. I guess we're best friends now. Cool." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, and that's awesome. Yeah. Anyway. Dust. Breathe enough of that doo-doo dust, and you can end up with a nasty infection known as bird handler's lung. Oh. But even then, it takes a lot, like on some you clean bird sh- as a hobby for you to be exposed <coughs> to be down bad. So yeah, pigeons carry diseases, but no more than any other animal. I mean, by that logic, humans carry disease, but we're still out here raw dogging handshakes. Dogs can carry disease, yet I still see people tongue kissing them. Deer are walking nope. Airbnbs for ticks peddling Lyme disease. The cats can be cats. Cats have the people watching this. Yep. Yet yeah. pigeons are the ones that got tattooed as rodents with frequent flyer miles. Between 1941 and 2003, there have been 176 documented cases of pigeons passing off disease to a human. And again, it virtually take you being buddy from that one hay. Oh my god, oh my dude! Gosh. I was wondering if he was gonna bring that up, dude. Pigeon man. <laughs> <laughs> the Pigeon Man episode from Hey Arnold. Wow. Such a classic. I'd dude. forgotten about that until just now. Uh, yeah. Remember, Arnold, always wash your berries before you eat them. And then just gets <laughs> flown <laughs> away by the pigeons. <laughs> that was so good. Uh, World episode. You know what else I found out? Pigeons don't really spill sugar honey iced tea while flying. They 100% can, but since that could involve hitting their own feet, they prefer to do it on a perch. So it turns out the dirtiest thing about pigeons is the way we've done them. Which yes. actually sucks because once I started to work past my pigeon prejudice, I realized Those look I can't so believe cool. I'm about to say yes. this. They do. Pigeons are low key broken. Like they're mad talented for no reason. Like for example, they're one of the fastest things with wings in the world. Pigeons can fly at averages of 60 miles per hour, but can peak out at nearly 100. Yes. There have even what? been stories of pigeons triggering speed cameras in streets. We don't really notice because. Dude, I, oh man, there was one. It was a pigeon that flew in front of a guy's like uh, license plate mm-hmm. that triggered a uh, that triggered a uh, friggin' uh, like speeding camera, and it prevented the guy from getting a ticket. Because <laughs> because the well, pigeon. Was... Not to mention, you don't really know which actually triggered the speed camera, the car or the pigeon. Yeah, and the pigeon was just like chilling in front, like looking at the camera, like, uh. <laughs> not yeah, today. I saw that. 
because one of their biggest ops also happens to be the fastest. <laughs> which is only packed up by a 200 mile per hour Falcon Punch. Ooh. But Pigeon still have the juice to dodge a Paragon and live to talk about it. <clears throat> this way, the fastest thing on Earth hunts pigeons, and even that's not a total mismatch. And a good reason is another superpower we don't talk about: their eyes. The only real self-defense pigeon they can literally is the see power 360 of foresight. So if they don't see danger coming, or worse, don't recognize it, they just get bullied. But pigeons have 340 degree vision and can even see wavelengths of light invisible to us. They're so busted that the US Navy once upon a time tried using the chicken of the city to conduct search and rescue missions out in the ocean. Basically, they trained a couple pigeons to recognize random red or orange objects, you know, the, the colors you'd expect from a life jacket, and then press, or more like peck, on a switch on site. In test runs, the pigeons noticed the target 90% of the time, completely outclassing the human rescue crew who just barely pulled off 40%. Then there's the fact that the pigeons could remain vigilant for hours without falling off. Unfortunately, the experiment was cut short due to budget cuts and every pigeon involved getting killed during a crash landing. Oh. But even this experiment showcased another pigeon flex. They're way smarter than they get credit for. They probably would if they could talk like parrots or ravens. But even with a brain in the way he of a walnut, pigeons can still surprise us. Trained pigeons can actually pass the mirror test, the same one most dogs and cats fail. In 1990, <laughs> okay, okay. Pigeons can actually it's pass like, the mirror test, the same one. He like, he like. God damn that dog, ugly as hell. <laughs> <laughs> and I feel like that's the exact same look Asher would have on his face. Too. <laughs> no, he knows that that's his reflection. No, actually, no. I've just no. seen him make that look when I put headphones on his head. And well, he was confused as to what was um, happening. Uh, He's just... looked at himself in a mirror before. Well, that's the thing. Like, there's self, -re well, self recognition. Like, he looks at himself in the mirror, but if he reacts as though it's another, like, it's another dog, which dogs have passed the mirror test, but not on the same level as say primates. You see, an orangutan. Within like f like they've done the experiment on like more than a hundred orangutans, and usually within five to ten minutes, the orangutan realizes that, oh, this is me. This is I'm looking at myself, huh? Whereas dogs, it took it took it takes dogs and cats much longer. Like it like sometimes multiple like days of exposure before realizing, oh, oh, this this isn't another dog. But pigeons. I feel like Vega would be hard to test that with because he's so nonchalant about everything. That's he true. He would just probably look at it for a second and then he'd walk off. He'd be like, oh, he'd be like, huh. <laughs> Damn, he doesn't get like hissy about other cats being near him or anything. He's just like, oh, hello. It's like, oh, it's another cat. All right, I'm going back to bed. <laughs> Most dogs and cats fail. In 1995, a study found that pigeons could be taught to tell the difference between a Picasso painting and Monet. I'm not gonna lie to you, I myself can't do that. To a similar beat, pigeons could be trained to tell apart malignant breast tumors from the benign. Yeah, yeah, we're still talking about a bird here. Oh. A German study in 1990 found that the avian overachievers could successfully memorize 725 different black and white patterns and correctly identify the 100 patterns associated with a reward. Damn. Pigeons also have an ability to count that rivals primates. Bro, tell me why folks found out that the Bane of Broadway can read. So what scientists did, right, they taught these pigeons a bunch of words and would either show a real word on screen or a misspelt one to go with a star. If it was an actual word like, for example, dog, they had to peck at the word. And if it was some nonsense like ugged, the rules were to peck at the star. Get it right and they'd win food. Tell me why the feathery assault on your windshield actually did better than the baboons that took the same test. It was at this moment I went from highly impressed to low-key concerned with how smart pigeons are. There's like five million of them in NYC. We're cooked if they turn on us. Here's a couple other pigeon facts I picked up. That thing they'll do where they'll fly around in a circle as a synchronized group, that has a name and it's called murmuration. The best theory for why they do this is as a predator response because their yeah. honest to God best defense is just making it harder to be singled out. That weird crusty looking bump on their beaks is called the operculum and it's really only there to cover the nostrils. And like a middle-aged hairline, it slowly starts to disappear as they get older. Pigeons are also monogamous and one of the minority of birds that take till death seriously. That's probably why you've <laughs> never seen a baby pigeon. Parents supervise them virtually 24 seven until they look like the urbanite we're used to. Pigeons are as loyal as birds get. So it's no surprise they've had success in the military. This is Cher Ami, 
one of the many homing pigeons used by the U.S. during World War I. And in 1918, over 500 men got pinned behind enemy lines with no food, water, or ammunition. Their only option was releasing carrier pigeons begging for support, but the surrounding Germans peeped game and started lighting up any pigeon that tried. And that included Sheikh Ami, who got shot out of the air, but like a goddamn phoenix managed to get back up. Against every force of nature, the plucky pigeon made it back to base, traveling wow. a smooth 25 miles in 25 minutes to deliver the wow, message that would end up dude. saving the remaining 194 men. <laughs> and he did it half blind with a bullet wound and a leg Blood hanging on by a missing. literal thread. Wow. The bird whose name means... Yeah. I salute you. Means my dear friend past tense later the next year, but would be forever immortalized in the Smithsonian as the MVP of the 77th Infantry. G.I. Joe was a That's homing so pigeon cool. who came in clutch when he delivered a message calling off an airstrike of a village that the British had already regained control of from the Germans. If G.I. Joe didn't basically score at the buzzer, at least 1,000 soldiers would have been turned into ashes. And wow. then there was William yeah. of Orange, who traveled 250 miles in just over four hours to request air support after the radio sets had failed. Turned out he was the air support and William's carry job saved about 2,000 men. He would be one of the 32 pigeons to earn the Dickin Award, which was basically like a finals MVP but for animals. Somehow, pigeons went from war heroes to people actively trying to wipe them out. We really stay doing our troops wrong, but I think it's safe to say I was wrong. I was not familiar with their game. You won't catch me moving like this guy, but I'll definitely respect them, just from a reasonable distance. And that's the most character development you're gonna get. Drink water, hug your loved, tell the you appreciate them, and I'ma see y'all in the next one. <laughs> That's awesome. That is so cool. <laughs> oh. There's also another pigeon that like, every time I see, every time I think about that the video, it makes me laugh. Yeah. Yeah, this guy, uh... It's pretty early in the video, but I can't... There it is. <laughs> yeah. But this guy starts drumming. Watch the pigeon just like... <laughs> He's like, yeah. <laughs> it looks like the pigeon's like bobbing his head to the beat. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. That's why I love this. Pigeon's it. like, hell yeah. <laughs> oh, man. So, yeah. That was, uh, gosh. Pigeons. They get a bad rap, man. They get such a bad rap that it, it hurts. Oh, my God. And I'm glad that, I'm glad that, you know... A little more light was shed on pigeons so that people will hopefully not, you know, not look at them with the derision that they have in the past. But instead, look at them more as just like, yeah, <coughs> these things are these things are actually pretty, like, pretty cool and have served quite a quite a bit of like awesomeness throughout history. Uh, to be honest, I feel bad for my earlier thing I said in the video where I was like, haven't you ever heard people call them trash birds? They're like the rats of the sky. And then he explained that and I'm like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> so he definitely educated me too. So there we go. Thank you, CG. Oh, God. Well, I ain't got nothing else to say. I also respect oh. the pigeon lady from Home Alone 2 even more now because I'm like, okay, cool. She's not getting diseases. Yes. She might end up with the respiratory thing, though. Yeah, yeah. Possibly. Maybe. She's a fictional character now, so I think she's probably fine. I'd say she'd probably be all right. <laughs> well, ladies and gentlemen, thank you all very much for tuning in. And we hope you all enjoyed. This was how humanity gave this animal the middle finger. He is, of course, talking about pigeons. And we uh, hope to see you all very soon. Till the, and if you want to see more from Casual Geographic, click his name in the title of the video. And until next time, I'm Nate. I'm Kate. I am Nick. Y'all be good people. Take care. Peace. <laughs>